practicing the biblical principles of the Catholic faith and manifesting the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Receiving the Word with Father Todd Braggs. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and every expression of wickedness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today the church does celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King, and my sermon today is actually based upon the gospel appointed for today's Mass, coming to us from the 18th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Art thou the King of the Jews? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, if you read in this 18th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, St. John is good enough to write down for us the meeting between our blessed Savior and Pontius Pilate, which as St. John reminds us takes place in the Judgment Hall. And it is here that Pilate asks our blessed Savior point blank, Art thou a king? Specifically, he asked another way, Art thou the king of the Jews? Certainly, for the most part, I would dare say that yes, Pilate is asking our blessed Lord this question because, again, the Jews have accused him of making himself a king. And as a result, this would have been certainly all that the Roman authorities needed to do something with our blessed Savior. But beyond that, it is my contention that Pilate was asking this question, Art thou a king? Because quite frankly, here was a man that was facing Pilate that certainly did not look like a king, did not act like a king, did not dress as a king, did not talk like a king. The list goes on and on. He was not kingly according to the world's standards. In essence, even though you and I live some 2,000 years later after this event take, took place, certainly I would dare say that you and I both, we have an image in our mind. We have an idea in our own mind of what kings, what queens, what royalty look like, what they act like, where they live, how they act, etc., etc. Again, so did the Jews. They had an idea, again, in regards to being a Messiah, though. They had an idea of what the Messiah would look like and how the Messiah would act and how the Messiah would arrive. And again, this is why they were so disappointed in our blessed Savior and did not believe him to be the Messiah. You see, just like we're talking about if we have in our minds the idea of what a king is like and the Jews had an idea of what the Messiah is like, they envision the Messiah is coming in on a mighty horse. They envision the Messiah coming in with a great army behind him. They envisioned a Messiah who was great and powerful and forceful, who would vanquish, quite frankly, would vanquish all of their enemies when he arrived. This is what they envisioned in their mind. And so when the Messiah truly did come to earth and came as a small, innocent babe, being born in, in Bethlehem, a town that is not not famous for anything. And so, in their mind, how could this be the Messiah? Likewise, as our Lord grew up and as our Lord began what was come to be known as public ministry years, after working his whole life as a carpenter, then he spent the last three years of his life here on earth going around and preaching and teaching and letting anybody that would listen letting them know about the love of our Heavenly Father. In their minds, this was no Messiah at all. 
Again, the point that I'm making is this, dear friends. If people were disappointed in our blessed Lord, if people were angry and hateful towards our blessed Lord, if, we, if people spat on him and mocked him and ridiculed him and beat him and scourged him at the pillar and forced him to carry his own cross and made him die on that same cross, if they were going to do all of these things to him, does it not stand to reason that he, we would have to endure the same things in our life as well? You see, dear friends, for the very same reason that those who were disappointed, namely the Sadducees and the Pharisees, if they were disappointed in our blessed Lord and did not believe him, people are going to be disappointed in us as well. Why do I say that? Because again, people want us to be a certain way. People expect us to be a certain way. And when we do not meet their expectations of who we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be like, they get disappointed. Dear friends, keep in mind, we are always called to do what we can and our best for God and for God's sake here on earth. Again, if we look at scripture, specifically the second epistle written to the Corinthians in the 12th chapter in the ninth verse, we hear the following. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boost all, uh, excuse me, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Dear friends, St. Paul is making the point here. He's making the point that we are strong, strongest when we depend on the mighty power of God. And God shows forth his strength through our weakness. Again, anything that we can do that we can boast of, again, would not be anything compared to the creator of the universe. But even aside of that, anything that we have that we can boast of, whether it be our strength, whether it be our skills, whether it be our knowledge, whether it be our endurance, again, whatever we can think of, Anything that we do, anything that we have, anything that we possess, bear in mind, has been gifted to us by our Heavenly Father. He is the one that gives us all the blessings that we enjoy. Again, going back to the point about our blessed Savior. The second reason why the Jews, again, were not content with our blessed Lord and why they did not believe him to be the Messiah is because he did not tell them what they wanted to hear, quite frankly. Additionally, you and I as well, we do not tell people always what they want to hear. And as a result, when we don't tell people what they want to hear, they get upset with us. You and I, dear friends, as Christians, have to always keep in mind to act and to do as God would have us do. But additionally, we are called to say what God would have us say. That being said, again, it's sometimes very difficult in the situation that we are for the mere reason that our world seems like it is upside down. It seems like common sense has totally gone out the window. But that being said, we always have to listen to what God is saying to us and always have to relate to others 
what God would have us say. And as I say so often, we preach not only by the words that come out of our mouth, we preach powerful sermons by the way in which we live our lives and give examples to others. If I could, if I could read from this fifth chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, the fifth chapter beginning in the 20th verse, we hear the following. And this is certainly apropos for the day and age in which we live. We read the following. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Dear friends, especially in this day and age in which you and I live, we have so many people that do just this. They try to make the point that they try to tell you, oh, that's light when it's completely dark outside. Or they'll tell you it's dark when it's completely light outside. Again, it seems like the world is upside down. And as I stated a little bit ago, common sense has completely gone out the window. But that being said, you and I have to always keep anchored in our blessed Savior. Again, and this is so fitting for today's solemnity of Christ the King. We always, as Christians, have to be close to the banner of Christ, our blessed Lord. Christ, indeed, is our King. We always have to stay close to the sacred heart of Jesus, to stand firm next to him. Again, our blessed Lord, he knew us from the time before we were born. But that being said, he has stayed closer to us than we have to him. Sometimes, dear friends, human beings, being who we are, we get caught up in doing this. We get caught up in doing that. And the things that we get caught up in aren't necessarily bad, don't get me wrong, but it's just our attention gets diverted. And then before you know it, we don't seem to have time for God because we're doing our own thing and we're busy and this, that, and the other. So often it seems for us human beings, we only seem to go to God when we need something. We live our own lives, but then when something goes wrong, then we go running to God, praying and asking for his help. We have to make a point to remind ourselves on a daily basis who our king is. Not only the king of the universe, but the king of of our hearts. Again, if I can end this short sermon by going to a passage of the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter and the 6th verse, we hear the following, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Again, dear friends, our blessed Savior is indeed the way, the truth, and the life. Again, it is through him that we have the opportunity to have our sins forgiven. It is through him that we have the opportunity to live eternally in, again, with our blessed Savior up in heaven. It is only through his efforts that he has done on our part, on our behalf, that we will be able to experience all the good things that we're able to experience. And again, our Lord insisted on doing each and every one of these things. Each and every one of these blessings he chose to include us in, he did because he loves us so much. For that part, for that reason alone, we need to always make a point to always stay in his presence, keep him close to us. And again, the best, the, the best place that he would like to stay is right here, close to us in our hearts. There we can make a throne for him. 
for the king of the universe and the king of our hearts. God bless each and every one of you this day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let me take just an extra moment or so to remind all of you that should you want to get in touch with receiving the Word, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Here's our website, www.encouragementfortoday.com. That's www.encouragementfortoday.com. Or write us at 829 Northeast Chester Avenue, Topeka, Kansas, 66616. That's 829 Northeast Chester Avenue, Topeka, Kansas, 66616. Knowing what a big difference encouragement makes in a person's life, you will not only find Father Todd's Sunday sermons, but also other assorted podcasts, audios, and devotional blocks that will be a help in your faithful walk with the Lord. And that will help you take heart when the going gets tough and the way feels long. I'm Father Francis Dominic, and on behalf of Father Todd Braggs and Receiving the Word, thanks for listening.